Okay. Is it 6.30? We do have a formal going to call workshop session to order. So we have three proclamations tonight. Item number one is a public hearing. It's again being continued. Item number two is public hearing. Being asked to be continued. Item three. Seven, or are we going to add the purple bird? The logo will be part of the Z. Which, which, which logo? <laughs> <laughs> we, will, we will talk to. We'll paint cautiously. Future logo. <laughs> <laughs> TVD. Logo TVD. Out of six. And these are for one year, right? Um, seven. I have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> one may be for Liz or maybe for Eric, but is there any circumstance where this variance to let the HOA take care of the fence would result in uh, the fence somewhere in the future no longer, or maybe the city manager? I forgot you're there. That's okay. Um, <laughs> you're still the city manager, right? As of today, yes. Okay, I was just checking. Um, I'm going to ask Claude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll ask Claude. Um, is there any circumstance where uh, this maintenance would dis be discontinued in the future by some unexpected event? Well, by their failure to do it, yeah. I mean, there's no guarantee that they are going to do it forever. And it's certainly feasible that the HOA <clears throat> I have the resources and then come back and ask you to maintain it for them. Okay. So I think that's in the realm of possibility. It's not a, this is not a guarantee that they'll do it forever and ever. This is more of a, hopefully they'll do it as long as they can and hopefully that is forever, but at some point in time it could come back. So is there nothing we can put into the uh, variance that would give more protection? We, we, we're going to set the language up, should you approve this, we'll set the language up like we've done on others, that should the HOA fail or um, not exist in the future, that those easements and maintenance would revert back to the city, and we can set that up in the construction plans and the plans. I think he's so, trying to avoid that. Yeah, I was trying to avoid that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, yeah, but you're owning it. It may be unavoidable. The other way, the, right? The need, the idea is that the HOA would maintain it at a higher level, but if the HOA failed to do it, then it would be a no man's land. In essence, like pools or HOA centers, like we've had, that we always revert that back if they fail to be a solvent entity or if they just go away. And that reverts back to the city. You can take the position that you don't want to have anything to do with the maintenance and you will not maintain it. But then, if something happens, then yes. nobody's going to maintain it. Being, okay. So then it winds up coming back to you regardless. I'm just looking for the best <coughs> uh, <coughs> protection no we can get. Well, to that though, is he putting up the same escrow that developers usually put up that don't do an HOA to maintain it? Street maintenance escrow? The screening wall escrow. Uh, yeah, screening wall escrow. Uh, I don't know if that's part of his deal or not, Eric. Is he still putting that no, up? It, that's part of the deal. That, again, again, remember the city court requirement that if this is a city wall, city maintains it, city easement. And they put up 20% of the, the cost of Since the, it's not the screening wall. That's that's code. Okay. Right. So the, in essence, they want to maintain it in their private easement. They, since they're maintaining it, they wouldn't post it. But in the event they fail, then we take it back over, we assess them, or we assess okay. developer or WEX that if that happens. Okay, well, maybe, maybe then what you should do is ask them to go ahead and put up 
the escrow. It's the escrow. But that's they, why I was. They could tap it if they wanted to tap it, perhaps with city approval for maintenance. That's why I was going. Well, well, I was going. You want the best way to do it? To me, the best way to do it was have them go ahead and put up the escrow, and, and then they can maintain it. Yeah. We will just hold the escrow, not touch it, put it in a escrow account for it in case it was to ever fall from the program. Then you have the escrow money. I like that. I think they would want, they probably want to be able to tap it for maintenance as maintenance was required. I don't think they're going to maintain it and put it on the spot. Our students, typically a fee, and when we collect it, it goes into a general wall fund for the city that we use, that we maintain wall. <clears throat> but you can, you can do the escrow that ask you to do that. So what, what's, what's recommended? Well, if you want a little bit more control over it, then go ahead and ask for the to make the deposit uh, escrow. And they would be allowed to withdraw on those funds and maintenance was needed until they were until they were gone, which is really what happens under a normal screening wall scenario. I guess, but with escrow, I mean, this says they'll pay for it with HOA fees, so that's an ongoing source of revenue. And I suspect the that's what the developer's fund. trying to do. He's trying to get out of the initial escrow and then let the HOA deal with it in the future. Maybe it's, I mean, is there some middle ground? <laughs> could the HOA could pay into an escrow? Cut it in half. Cut it in half. With the, the, the city would have to maintain or yeah. keep watch over it to maintain. Okay. My, hey, it, somebody could file bankruptcy. Now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And that's yeah. uh, what I was <clears throat> asking really about is when somebody yeah. somehow vacates that responsibility, what? Or it's a flop and... and they never finish. And if they do put escrow funds up and, we, and they have to come back to us, then we've got to track that, research what they're requesting and all that kind of stuff. Okay. I mean, it's easy to do, but it's, it's just another step that our staff is going to have to remember. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like it's really solving much, so never mind. Well, how, how, is, well, it, it how is the 20% escrow working currently? Is it maintaining? No. The amount you ask they escrow is nowhere near the cost of the the maintenance list is just minor fees. Yeah, it's not really an escrow. Yeah, it's, a it's a maintenance fee. Okay, so it's <clears throat> right currently it's not keeping up with the cost of maintaining the wall for how many years? One year? Five years? Well, years? I mean, basically it's, the wall deteriorates all at once, generally speaking. You have to replace the whole wall and it doesn't come anywhere close to paying for the cost of the entire wall. But it is a general. It may, it may pay for a little repair here and there. It's a general fund. It isn't based on each fence. Right. Right. That's correct. So it's a general fund. It's collection of the money. money. Collection of the money. Yeah. 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 So it isn't attached to that one. We're going to no, keep no, this no. money until that goes into all it. fence maintenance. It so might it could be all be gone else. next year. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was that all gone. Time. That's why we were approved a yeah. supplemental. So what's the reason you could you could. Uh, Ask them to put up an escrow for this fence, a true escrow, not a fee, Consider. not a fee, but a true escrow for this particular fence in the event that there's problems with it, and they be able to draw down on that escrow. That's what I was referring to, a separate, not a fee, but an escrow for that that would remain there mm -hmm. in case they defaulted on the maintenance of the fence and it gives the city something to fall back on. Okay. To me, that would, you ask for the best solution possible. To me, that would be... That would bridge that short-term gap. An escrow would have an end date. Yeah. So it'd be an end date when they could get that back if it's not used. Is there a chance to find who to give it back to? Is there a limit as to the end date? Yeah. It, it, would, it would have to be a reasonable connection to, I mean, you can just say we're going to keep it 50 years. Right. So it would be up to staff to come up with a reasonable Is it length? To the lifetime of the improvement generally is what it was. Didn't we get into that with the right of way where we put an escrow in? And they wanted it back because the road was never built. Well, those are escrows in lieu of actual construction. Right. As opposed but this to would maintenance escrow. Still an escrow. Okay. I guess it'd be the same concept. If you didn't use it for escrow, for maintenance, then they'd get it back at some point. Right. Yeah. Same they thing. Know the best years. fence. Yeah. Right. It happens to be the most indestructible fence in the world and lasts forever, then they would get it back. Or if they built a fence and they maintained it for 10 years, at the end of that 10-year period, then they get their escrow money back. 
probably a couple that way there's probably it takes you for 10 years against them going belly up belly up and, go that and not having anything. We just have to sit down with them and negotiate something. So it sounds like all they're trying to do is not spend the money today. Yeah. It's a little worse. Yeah. Well, <laughs> a little worse. That, that's the way it's done. The, the walls are put up and they're maintained by HOAs. Mm -hmm. Adding tonight. But again, in any subdivision, in any city, that HOA can belly up and then it wouldn't have it. maintenance. So, so you'd be I'm back to the original, which is you own the fence. Correct. Yeah. So back to square one. So I'm back to that question what suggestion do you have for action tonight? Based on that discussion. <clears throat> um, probably two options. One, you could table it until we can come up with something that back to you form an, of an escrow agreement or something like that or, or two you can grant the variance subject to development of an escrow agreement if they're willing to sign off on that tonight and just develop something that works what made them change their mind between now and the prior meeting well, why this wasn't done initially wasn't done initially oh, was with the original just, with your original plat you mean yeah I don't know. And P and Z and everything else. They may not have thought about it. I don't know what the answer is. Can you give me something if that's the um, subject to? Okay. Sure. Sure. Put me up. The onslaught of Okay. Thank you. Is that the only one you had? No question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Adam. Eight. On item eight, we're going to adjourn to uh, executive session under five five one point zero seven one consultation with attorney and five five one point zero seven four personnel matters. Any other questions? All right. Anything? Judy? Leah? Bob?
It is 7 o'clock. We do have a quorum. We'll call the City Council meeting in order. First items on the agenda is the invocation led by Councilman Durham and then the pledge of both the American and Texas flags led by Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Gilmore. Would you join me in a moment of silence? Thank you. Please join me in the pledge to our flags. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. We have some proclamations to present tonight, so if I could, I'd like to start with, if I could have those here uh, for the Fair Housing Month, if you'd come down forward, please. Hi, come on over here and join me. Hi, I'm Dean Eucher. Hi, Dean Jenny Stewart. Nice to meet you, Jenny. I'll do the proclamation and give one of you a chance to speak if you'd like to. Is that all right? Okay. 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 Whereas Title VIII of the Civil Rights Act of 1968, as amended, prohibits discrimination in housing and declares it is a national policy to provide within constitutional limits for fair housing in the United States. And whereas the principle of fair housing is not only national law and national policy, but a fundamental human concept and entitlement for all Americans. And whereas the 46th anniversary of this national fair housing law during the month of April provides an opportunity for all Americans to recognize that complete success in the goal of equal housing opportunity can only be accomplished with the help and cooperation of all Americans. Now, therefore, I, Dean Euchert, Mayor of the City of Louisville, on behalf of the Louisville City Council, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2014 as Fair Housing Month in the City of Louisville, and do hereby urge all the citizens to become aware of and support the Fair Housing Law proclaimed the 21st day of April 2014. representation of a team of professionals that on the second Saturday of every month we come to Louisville to teach first-time home buyers the process of buying that first house. We are informing and educating our attendees as to the process which Christine represents lending, Gloria represents real estate, Lewis represents the title company. I'm sorry Robbie could not be here tonight, but he represents our insurance component and then our inspector. We offer our attendees an opportunity to learn so that they will not face issues of predatory lending, they will be better borrowers, and they will be more successful as homeowners. So we thank you for this recognition tonight. We love what we do or we wouldn't give up our Saturdays to do it but we like our homeowners to be successful and avert foreclosure. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. If we could have those here for the community, community development week. Please come forward. Eric, nice 
much, sir. Whereas the week of April 21st through 26, 2014 has been designated as National Community Development Week by the National Community Development Association to celebrate the Community Development Block Grant Program. And whereas the CDBG program is celebrating 40 years of providing local governments with the resources required to meet the needs of persons of low and moderate income, and CDBG funds are used by thousands of neighborhood-based nonprofit organizations throughout the nation to address pressing neighborhood and human service needs. And whereas the CDG program provides annual funding and flexibility to local communities to provide decent, safe, and sanitary housing, a suitable living environment and economic opportunities to low and moderate income people. And whereas over the past five years, our community has received a total of $3,055,087, which was issued to fund the following activities. Milton Street Improvement Project, Edwards Street Concrete Panel Repairs Project, Southwest Parkway Sidewalks and Street Rehabil Rehabilitation Project, Holford's Prairie Asphalt Rehabilitation Project, CCA Facilities Rehabilitation Project, First Time Homeowner Assistance Program, Louisville Housing Re Rehabilitation Program, and Public Services Funding for 10 Local Social Service Agencies. Now therefore, I, Dean Euchert, Mayor of the City of Louisville, on behalf of the Louisville City Council, do hereby proclaim the week of April 21st through 26, 2014 as Community Development, Block, Community Development Week and urge all citizens to join us in recognizing the Community Development Block Grant Program on its 14th anniversary and the important role it plays here in our community. Would one of y'all like to speak here? Oh yeah. You mentioned there are a lot of the great things we're able to do around town. I guess I just want to thank y'all for your continued support and I'm looking forward to the next 40 years of the Community Development Block Grants. Thank you. Let's get forward. All right. Don't we look good? <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little nervous. <laughs> we do too. I bet you do. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I'm in better hands than y'all are, so we're in good shape there. Whereas today society is finding more citizens involved in motorcycling on the roads of our country, and whereas motorcyclists are roughly unprotected and therefore more prone to injury or death in a crash than other vehicle drivers, and whereas campaigns have helped inform riders and motorists alike on motorcycle safety issues to reduce motorcycle-related risks, injuries, and most of all, fatalities, through a comprehensive approach to motorcycle safety. And whereas it is the responsibility of all who put themselves behind the wheel to become aware of motorcyclists, regarding them with the same respect as any other vehicle traveling the highways of this country. And it is the responsibility of riders and motorists alike to obey all traffic laws and safety rules, and whereas urging all citizens of our community to become aware of the inherent danger involved in operating a motorcycle and motorists alike, to give each other the mutual respect they deserve. Now therefore, I, Dean Euchert, Mayor of the City of Louisville, on behalf of the Louisville City Council, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2014 as Motorcycle Safety and Awareness Month in the city of Louisville, Texas, and urge all residents to do their part, increase safety and awareness in our community, proclaimed 21st day of April, 2014. Let's get some photos and we'll let one of y'all speak. How's that? All right, there we go. Y'all kind of scrunchy in there, mate, scrunchy, so we can get to, let's put this today in.
No, I was hoping I'd get a free motorcycle. <laughs> Would someone like to say a few words? Oh, we'll make this short and sweet. Go right ahead, sir. I want to thank everyone. I'd like to thank the mayor, the council, for having us down here for this. Uh, this is important for not just the people you see standing here, but also for the law enforcement. They also ride motorcycles. So we're trying to get the word out for everybody, not just us. So next time you see, you know, you're texting or something while you're driving, think, think about the motorcycle next to you. But once again, thank you, and we appreciate your support thank once again. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Next item on agenda is continued public hearing consideration of the service and assessment plan and assessment role for Louisville Castle Hills Public Improvement District number five. At the March 3rd, 2014 meeting, City Council called for a public hearing to consider the service and assessment plan and assessment role which have been created to identify public improvements to provide the PED along with related information concerning the cost and indebtedness to be incurred. Revisions to the plans are currently pending the Attorney's General the Attorney General's opinion recommendation that Council continue the public hearing until May 5th, 2014. Uh, Councilman, uh, Councilman Tierney? Uh, move to continue. Second. Second. May 5th. Date. May 5th. May 5th. Second. We have a motion by Councilman Tierney to continue the hearing until May 5th, 2014. A second by Councilman Vaughn. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item two is continued public hearing, consideration of the service and assessment plan and assessment role for Louisville Castle Hills Public Improvement District number seven. Once again, revisions to the plan are currently pending the Attorney General's opinion. Recommendations that Council continue the public hearing until May 5th, 2014. Uh, Councilman Gilmore. Mayor, move to continue the public hearing until May 5th, 2014. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Gilmore to continue to May 5th, 2014. A second by Councilman Ferguson. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next time is Visitor Citizens Forum. At this time, any person with business before the Council not scheduled on the agenda may speak to the Council. No formal action can be taken on these items at this meeting. I do have a, a speaker card filled out by uh, Brian Hayduck and Lisa Pierce. If y'all want to come forward, please. If you would just give your name and address for the record, please. Sure. <clears throat> First, thank you. We appreciate Mr. Mayor, council members, um, city staff. Appreciate the opportunity to speak. My name is Brian Hayduck. I live at 600 Duke Saxony Drive in, in Louisville. My name is Dr. Lisa Pierce. I reside at 4401 Biscayne Drive in Flyman. And it's, uh, it's our privilege to serve on the board of the Children's Advocacy Center for Denton County. And our purpose here this evening is just to share with you some of the information on the work of the Children's Advocacy Center and to thank you for the ongoing support. Uh, it's, it's difficult to talk about the subject of child abuse. Statistically, one in four girls and one in six boys will be sexually abused before their 18th birthday. The sad reality is that in 2013, the Children's Advocacy Center for Denton County helped provide justice and healing to over 1,800 children and non-offending family members. The center saw 810 new children enter our doors last year. More than 95% of those were child sexual abuse. 
The mission of the Children's Advocacy Center is to provide justice and healing for abused children through interagency collaboration and community education. How does the Children's Advocacy Center provide justice and healing? To help with justice, we work closely with law enforcement. We have worked with Chief Kerbo and the Louisville Police Department, and I'd like to thank each of them for their efforts to protect the children of Louisville. In addition to local law enforcement agencies, we bring together Ch Child Protective Services, the District Attorney's Office, Sexual Assault Nurse Examiners, Juvenile Probation, volunteers, and our own staff. This multidisciplinary team approach under one roof is one of the reasons for the increase in the conviction rate. Before the opening of the Children's Advocacy Center in 1997, the conviction rate was 8% and has risen over the years to average 70%, including a 77% 77, 77 conviction rate of cases filed by law enforcement last year. Child abuse is typically reported to the police department or through the statewide child abuse hotline. Once reported, the police or CPS contact the family and the child and the non-offending family members come to the Children's Advocacy Center in Louisville. Our trained staff, our trained staff members conducts an extensive videotaped forensic interview to uncover the facts of the case. The interview is conducted in a child-friendly environment, observed by representatives from law enforcement and child protective services and is videotaped so that that child does not have to go through the trauma of having to repeatedly retell their story. The Children's Advocacy Center provides the ongoing coordination, oh, I'm sorry. Did I get that wrong? Hold on. Right. The Children's Advocacy Center provides the ongoing coordination of the multidisciplinary team that is focused on investigating and prosecuting the case. We also provide trial preparation for child for the child victim who may have to face his or her perpetrator in court. To help with healing, we provide crisis counseling, individual and group therapy sessions, play therapy, and psychological assessments if needed. Again, all of the services provided free of charge. Louisville has always been a supporter of the Children's Advocacy Center, and we appreciate your past and ongoing support. Unfortunately, our need continues to be great. Denton County grew by 52% according to the latest census, and we continue to see an increase in the number of child abuse cases. Louisville is not immune from the presence of child abuse. We helped 292 clients who reside in Louisville in 2013, providing 5,136 separate services to those 292 clients. We also provide free community education to help people prevent, recognize, and react responsibly to signs of child abuse. Please join us for one of our upcoming child abuse prevention programs called Stewards of Children. Upcoming class times and locations can be found on our website. Most of you have passed the Children's Advo Advocacy Center without even knowing it. We are just west of I-35 off of Highway 407, directly behind the Ballet Conservatory. In closing, I'd like to thank, we'd like to thank again, Chief Kerbo, the entire police department, the mayor, the city council, and city staff for your time, attention, and support of the Children's Advocacy Center for Denton County. If you'd like a tour, just, just call me at 917-923-9988, and I'm happy to arrange that. Thank you. Thank both of you for the work that y'all do and the work you do here in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next item <clears throat> is a consent agenda. All the following items on the consent agenda are considered to be self-explanatory by the City Council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council member or citizen so requests. For a citizen to request removal of an item, a speaker card must be filled out and submitted to the City Secretary. I did not have any cards filled out and no one asked any items to be uh, pulled. Councilman Durham. Okay. Have a motion to approve the consent agenda by Councilman Durant, a second by Councilman Tierney. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item seven is consideration of a variance to the Louisville City Code section 
1.49 screening walls for Wendell Meadows addition, a 60.803 acre parcel zoned East Estate townhouse with 232 single family detached lots and four HOA maintained right of way areas located on the northeast quadrant of FM 2281 and FM 544 as requested by John Holcomb, PE of Kimberly Horn and Associates Inc. representing the property owner. The subject site was rezoned from general business to a state townhouse with the intent to build 232 detached single family residential units by the city council on April 15, 2013. The preliminary plat with an alley waiver variance was approved by city council May 20, 2013. The final plat for phase one was approved by planning and zoning commission on February 4, 2014 with no additional variances. The owner is now requesting a variance to construct a perimeter screening wall that will be privately maintained by Wendell Meadow Homes Owner, Homeowners Association rather than the city. Recommendations the council consider the variances as set in the caption above. Councilman Ferson. Thank you, Mayor. Sure my mic is on. Press that button and see what happens. I tried it. Oh, Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I can't hear myself. <laughs> um, I'm going to move that we um, table this item until May 5th to give staff time to get with the developer and discuss additional options related to the maintenance of the fence. Have a motion by Councilman Ferguson. Second. Second. To table to, did you have a specific? May 5th. May 5th. Okay, to May 5th. A second by Councilman Vaughn. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And now we will convene into closed session. According to Texas Government Code Section 551.071, consultation with attorney, and 551.074, personnel matters.
the one they quit oh, there supporting. We go. Yes. Oh, is that right? Yeah, <laughs> they just quit supporting it, I think. <laughs> We'll convene back into regular session. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is item eight, consideration of an appointment to the position of city manager and authorization for the mayor to execute an employment agreement. The current city manager will retire effective April 30th, 2014. The appointment of his replacement is therefore necessary. Uh, <clears throat> recommendation is that city council make an appointment to the position of city manager effective May 1, 2014 and authorize the mayor to execute the related employment contract. Councilman Ferguson. Yes, Mayor. Um, it's my pleasure to move that we um, offer the uh, position to Donna Barron um, with, and authorize the mayor to execute the contract and to uh, do that on May 1st. Second. Have a motion by Councilman Ferguson, a second by Councilman Gilmore. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, Council. Any words? Why don't we go around? We'll give her back. Give her a minute to catch her breath, and then we'll <laughs> <laughs> give her a minute to catch her breath. Okay, bring down the reports. Nika. Bob? They're going fast now. Somebody <laughs> 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 might give you a chance to get a threat. They get too satisfied. Chief Tittle. <laughs> Linda. Chief Carbo. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to have any comments before Donna speaks? Surely, sir, there's a lake level report or something you lake can level fill in some time with. <laughs> up, oh, wow. down. Why? Up a little bit. I don't know about y'all, but I got a little over an inch of rain last night. Yeah. Last night. Good. What was the comment? Ms. Barron. Mayor and Council, I appreciate the support that you've shown me, and I certainly look forward to the challenge. This is a wonderful city, a great staff. Uh, I, I couldn't ask for a better team, so thank you very much. Well, thank you, and thank you for the work you've been doing for the last, I'll say, few years, because you're so young, it couldn't have been long. But for the last uh, several years, actually, we appreciate that. We look forward to a long-standing relationship with you as you step into the new role. We appreciate your efforts, and we appreciate your willingness to do that for us. Brenda. Mr. Ferris. Yes. Mr. Backus. Yes. Councilman Durham. Yeah, just say thank you. Congratulations, Donna. And just remember, you can always call, call Claude <laughs> that he messed up something in the past. <clears throat> Maybe he has an idea how to fix it. Thank you, Mayor. Councilman Terry. Congratulations, Donna Barron. Uh, thank you, Claude King, for all your hard work. This is your last city council meeting. Yes, so. it is. Outstanding job, and we'll see you for your reception. Around. Friday. 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 Friday, 25th. Counting down the minutes. Well, that's not quite that bad yet. <laughs> We're down to days, though. <laughs> Councilman Gilmore. Mayor, I wanted to uh, briefly remind folks that the 28th annual spring cleanup from the uh, Keep Louisville Beautiful is this Saturday, April 26th. Um, 522 volunteers last year, over five tons of litter were collected. Let's see if we can break that record. Um, you can go to keeplouisvillebeautiful.org to get information and to volunteer. And this year is new. They have a recycling expo going on, so bring your recyclables and they'll take them there as well. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, sir. And I'm going to skip you just a minute, Mr. King, because I see that you've got some prepared comments, and they're about that thick. So <laughs> we'll come back to you in a moment, please. It's only take a half hour or so. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Ferguson. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, Mr. King, I will miss you. Um, it's uh, one of those ironies that we discover we've known each other for a very long time yes, we have. and um, have bumped into each other on more than a few occasions in the past, independent of the city. Um, and I have to say that it's been my experience with you with the city that's really iced the cake, so mm -hmm. I will Thank miss you. you. Um, Ms. Barron, I'm delighted that you will be city manager. I think you bring a lot of strengths and a lot of knowledge to the table and certainly the respect of the staff, so I look forward to a very productive time. Um, with that, I've got a few MCL things. Unfortunately, it's not a short list this time, so I'll try to whip through it. Uh, stage shows, uh, Treasures, 30 Years of Dance, presented by Lake City's Ballet Theater on April 25th and 26th, two shows. 
A Midsummer Night's Dream on April 22nd and 24th, that's actually being done outdoors by Coram Deo Academy. Uh, Project Youth, A Musical of Hope and Survival, which is a rock opera, two, uh, six shows, six, April 30th through May 4th, presented by Our Productions Theater Company. Uh, the Secret Garden, May 2nd and 3rd, two shows by the Acting Studio. We have another Texas Tunes concert coming up in about a month with Kelly Willis and Bruce, Bruce Robison. They're both very well known, have been around for a long time, have recordings on major labels. Uh, look for a packed house if you want to go get your tickets. Highly recommend it. You'll have a good time. We had a great one Saturday night, really great, with Kerry Rodriguez. Um, We've got a public event, Healthy You Health Series, May 8th, presented by Medical Center of Louisville. And then art exhibits, Wilds of Texas by Visual Arts League is in the gallery through May 24th. And in the North Hallway is Spontaneous 2 by Visual Arts League. And that's also through May 24th. And the art gallery is open Tuesdays through Saturdays, 1 to 5, or any time that there are performances in the MCL Grand. Uh, one other item, Chalk This Way, is returning after its first year, a uh, pretty successful year the first year, looking forward to even more success this year. It'll be May 17th, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., professional artists, amateur competition, music, food, children's gallery, scholarship competition, art vendors, sidewalk games, um, circus freaks, uh, stilt walkers. There'll be a lot to see and do, very much a family event, so uh, you'll want to check into that. Admission is free. <laughs> So can't beat that deal. And with that, I'm done. Thank you. Councilman Vaughn. Yes, Mayor. I, too, would like to congratulate Donna Barron. I look forward to working with her. Uh, she's been very helpful to me in the past. And in her new position, I'm sure that's just going to continue to happen. I would also like to give my congratulations to Mr. King. It's been an honor and a pleasure working with him. And we got a lot of business taken care of at his with his help, and I sure appreciate it very much. Thank you. And <clears throat> the only other thing I would like to do is invite everybody to a, an emergency preparedness summit and fair this Saturday, the 26th, at the Harmon campus. <clears throat> Congressman Michael Burgess is going to be the keynote speaker. It's going to be from 8 to 12 noon, and there's going to be presentations, exhibits, and demonstrations and I would like to have everybody that's available come out and enjoy. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Counselor? Julie? Also, once again, we appreciate you being here and appreciate what you do each and every day, sir. Thank you very much. And Donna, once again, I just want to say thank you very much for uh, taking on this challenge, and uh, I look forward to working with you for a long time and, and seeing the continued excellence that you bring to this community, and we appreciate that, ma'am. Thank you. And Mr. King, I want to say thank you for the many years I've had the pleasure of working with you. It's been a true pleasure. You've been a great mentor, a teacher, and uh, a good instructor at the same time. And I appreciate all that, and I appreciate what you've done over the years, what you've done for this community. And tonight is your night, so I'm going to let you finish it up, sir. Well, thank you, Mayor uh, and Council. Thank you for everything you've, you've said tonight. Uh, Tonight's not festivist, so I can't air any grievances. <laughs> Save that for another time. But I would like to just uh, make a few comments. Uh, as I mentioned in January, all good things must come to an end. And so it's with very mixed feelings that I find myself at uh, my very last council meeting for the city of Louisville. And uh, all I can think about uh, in that regard is the old saying that time does fly. And boy, has it flown. It doesn't seem like 25 years since that first meeting um, seems just like yesterday that, and that meeting was over here on that corner, <laughs> over there, in the old post office city hall, uh, just a few feet away from this very building. And a lot has changed since then, uh, not the least of which is the space that the meetings uh, are actually held in. Uh, but there is a time and a season for everything, and it's time for me to pass the baton. And so uh, I will simultaneously miss and not miss coming to this place every first and third Monday, and uh, uh, we'll see how that works out over time. 
Uh, I would like to express my appreciation to the citizens and the organizations of the City of Louisville for their support and confidence over the past 25 years. I would also like to thank the many councils and council members over that time, but especially those of the last 16 years uh, during my tenure as city manager for their support and leadership. Uh, most importantly, I would like to thank a dedicated staff right from the street maintenance worker to the treatment plan operator to the department heads and ACMs for consistently getting the job done and done well and making my job so much easier over the years. It is them that I will miss the most. I should also thank someone else, and that is my better half and partner of over 34 years, Patricia, who is in the audience for her very first and her very last council meeting at the city of Louisville. <laughs> Uh, she allowed my work here at the city to happen through her dedication to our daughters as they were growing up, uh, her sacrifice of many evenings, weekends, and even anniversaries, birthdays, and Valentine's Days over the years, as well as her continuous positive and bright outlook on life itself. I could not have done this job without her. So while this is my last meeting, it's also the beginning of a new era with Ms. Barron something I'm particularly proud of, her appointment tonight. So with that and my sincere gratitude in mind that I wish Louisville, its citizens and employees a great future. Uh, good luck to all of you, and I hope that that future will be as bright as the past has been to me. Uh, I will think of you each and every time I watch Monday Night Football or the NCAA Basketball <laughs> Championships in the privacy of my living room in the future. Again, thank you very much. eloquently said just like you've done over the many years you've been here and we all wish you and your lovely wife Pat and, and your children and your grandchildren uh, many happy years in your next chapter of your life you. and we know it will be full of lots of fun and enjoyment and we truly do want to thank you Pat and your daughters for all the time that you've donated to this community and giving up that special time with your husband and your father with their father uh, being able to let him to lead this community forward as he has. And we appreciate that very much. With that, in accordance to Texas Government Code, subchapter D, section 551.072, uh, property acquisition, and section 551.087, deliberation regarding economic development negotiations will now convene into closed session. Mm -hmm. Very well said, sir. We'll convene back in regular session. Council, is there any uh, business to entertain? No, sir. Move to adjourn. Second. I have a motion adjourned by Councilman Tierney, a second by Councilman Durham. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.